Model E4, Motorola's fourth generation in the Model E line, is all about giving you that perfect smartphone for the cheapest price that you can get without sacrificing any performance. This is Chuck's Corner and this is the review of the Motorola E4. Let's start with the specs. Moto E4 comes with Snapdragon 425 and 2 GB RAM with a 5 inch HD which is 720 pixels and not 1080 so it's a 5 inch HD 720 pixel screen with a fingerprint sensor and a removable back that actually has a removable battery as well. And it also comes with a 5 megapixel selfie camera and an 8 megapixel rear camera both with an aperture opening of 2.2. This phone is available from Amazon for $99 if you're an Amazon Prime member or if you want to go get a contract from Verizon you get it for $70 and if you don't want both and you just want to go buy directly from Motorola.com you can get it for $129. The good thing about this phone is it comes unlocked and works with all the carriers here in the United States and the good thing is it also comes with voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling. So if your carrier supports that, especially with T-Mobile and Verizon, you do get the Wi-Fi calling and voice over LTE out of the box. So that's something really great value to get with the cheap low end price. The screen display is really crisp and vibrant. The display is quite nice. I haven't found any difficulty looking at the screen, whether it's indoors or bright sunlight and it never felt I was actually using a 720 pixel screen unless I basically jumped on to games or you know started watching some movies. This is not one of those fancy top of the line specs that you would see in other phones but for the price that it sells it does give you a solid performance. So this takes us to the software. The Moto E4 comes with Android 7.1, so the latest that you can get from Android. And that's a welcoming change because most of the budget and low-end smartphones usually don't come with the latest Android system. But kudos to Motorola for keeping the promise of giving the latest Android updates to your phone. And the software runs perfectly fine. There is no bloatware, you know, if you're getting the Amazon version, you would certainly get the Amazon apps, but they are never going to interrupt you at all. But one thing to keep in mind, with the Amazon version, you're gonna get Amazon apps in your lock screen. I was skeptical about this initially. It's like, oh no, I'm going to see a lot of ads and you know, it's not gonna let me in until I click that ad. But it turned out to be a really good, uh, smooth experience because the ads are really colorful. Like every time you turn on your phone, you see a really good ad. So I really enjoyed it. Though I don't click a lot of those ads, you know, being an Amazon Prime member, I did click on a few ads that I found really useful. But other than that, you know, I just enjoy the lock screen. You do have to press the fingerprint sensor twice to get in. That probably might put you down if you, you know, want to just get into your home screen straight away. The performance is really good. For this price range, with two gigabytes of RAM, I was able to play games, I was able to switch between apps, I was also able to switch between games and resume them without any issues. But one thing you would have to understand is that since it only has two gigabytes of RAM and a processor that is much less performant when you compare the other smartphones, it will have some impact when you open the apps or when you switch to an app after a long standby period. Battery-wise, it has a 2800 mAh renewable battery. It's not that close to 3000 mAh that you get with other uh, smartphone vendors, but again, the optimization and the performance that you get with that actually keeps the battery life running at least for two days. I had no issues getting two days worth of battery life because the amount of apps I installed here was not as much as I would install in my U11 or SA. Now, the fingerprint sensor. The fingerprint sensor is also not the fastest and it's probably slow if you have gotten used to many other fast fingerprint sensors. But that said, it's accurate. It has never failed on me and it has always let me get into my home screen without any issues. If you have used the fingerprint sensor in other Moto smartphones, 
then you get the same functionality here in Moto E4 as well. You could choose to have the capacitive buttons or use the fingerprint sensor to navigate back and also open the recent apps with just a flick on the right and on the left. So it was really intuitive and I found it to be using more and I just switched off the capacitive buttons and turned to the fingerprint sensor to go back or open the recent app list. The other thing you can do with the fingerprint sensor, you can hold it until you get a short buzz and that will lock your screen instantly. Very, very handy. And if you hold it and until you get a long buzz, that opens the Google Assistant app. So yes, this Moto E4 comes with Google Assistant built in. The camera is very basic. It's actually a mediocre camera. Don't expect it to be super fast. I don't expect it to take, you know, really great shots. I found the camera to take good pictures in the daylight. And yeah, I was still able to capture better pictures in the low light, but certainly you still need some form of flash to capture the best out of it. Overall, I think this phone performs really well given its spec and price range and what you get is really worth the performance that you're getting with this phone. I have found no issues using this phone. In fact, if the camera was a little better, I wouldn't mind using this phone at all. It's really sleek, slim, you know, you can grab it by your hand and get going. You can type everything in your one hand. You don't have any issues with that. And it's really fast. If you're not playing games, like I don't play a lot of games, but I do have one or two games that I usually play. For me, this seems a perfect device for such use case. So if you're thinking, hey, I need a device that I can give to my kids because that's a first Android device, or I can give it to my you know, uh, grandparents so they don't have to deal with a lot of stuff or bloatware, or just a backup phone that you wanna get, I think Moto E4 is a really good choice. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, this is the right time to subscribe to my channel. If you're looking for the top tips and tricks and unbiased reviews such as this Moto E4 review that you're watching, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, you'll be the first to get to know the best tips and tricks and reviews on all the smartphones. So, what do you think about Moto E4? Did you get one? Which one did you get? The Amazon version, the Verizon or the unlocked version from Motorola.com. Let me know in the comments and until next time, bye.